We're here at Lou Rural Center. We're here with Dr. Charles Burnick. I am a new member of the study. I just did my MRI. I did blood work. We just looked at my brain. What's the study all about? Well, so we call it the Professional Athletes Brain Health Study. And really what the genesis of it is, is to understand the, the long-term effects of, of head impacts to the brain. Not only what happens to people, but also how we can detect changes early, how we can hopefully intervene, what are the risk factor. A lot of this stuff we just don't know, even though there's so much attention to concussion and things like that in sports. Because when I think of a concussion, I always hear this word. So you, you hit your head and boom, you're like dazzled or dizzy. The concussion is where there's an impact to the head. That's enough to cause at least transient or temporary neurological change. So concussion doesn't have to be you're knocked out cold. The most common things are, yeah, just being stunned, dazed. And that's, that's enough for a concussion? That's enough for a concussion. In, in sports, for example, in the military, people experience these things often and don't even recognize them. I've been hearing a lot about CTE. Mm -hmm. What is CTE? Well, it stands for chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and it's a condition that is due to having repetitive head impact. But what happens is it leads to a progressive, uh, we call it neurodegenerative process, where brain cells are, are actually dying and damaged over time. Similar to Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, now we know a lot more simply because it's gotten so much attention. And I'm a big UFC fan. I, I'm obsessed with UFC. I follow some certain fighters. I'm friends with a couple of fighters. You know, it's a lot of head injuries. Sure. It's nice to know there's gonna be a study focusing on their brains and to make sure that it doesn't get to a point where you can't go back. In fact, a major initiative of the study is to try to identify when that point of no return happens. That is, so we can advise athletes to, to stop before that happens. And I think a lot of the things that will come out of the study may have applications just to normal people. I mean, uh, we're learning actually the brain can repair. We've seen athletes who start the study as active fighters, and then they stop during the study, and we can actually see that the brain can repair. So the hope is, yeah, if you could stop soon enough before, again, irreparable damage, you can prevent these long-term complications. And I think these are really some of the exciting findings that we're getting. Each brain's different, two, two different people, right? and they, they both get the same amount of concussions. One might be out down the road to CTE and later on Alzheimer's, and one might be able to sustain that, away from that. How do you tell the difference and why are they different? So we know exposure to head impacts is the major risk factor of developing long-term problems, but there's gotta be other things. Is it just the way your head is, uh, your skull? Is it, is it your genetics? Is it how you repair from inflammation in the brain? All these factors are really unknown at this point, but if we could get a handle on that, then we, we really probably can make some headway in terms of giving athletes advice, telling them how to train, optimizing performance. So I think there's a lot to be learned. That's why we're so excited about being part of this. I'm trying everything, right? Mm -hmm. Biohacker. So I do a lot of research on non-scientific world, heavy uses of, of uh, extreme body exposure, heat, heat and cold. It's not, it's not studied enough where it can garner these results where you can prove these things. But also, there's also this other big reason why it won't get any approval because there's no pharmaceutical that can win from this. There's like, there's no capitalistic gain there. Yeah. The only gain is sauna companies. <laughs> you know, so like, they don't have nothing to gain. Yeah. And the Aoki Foundation, we actually fund research on just to see if the extreme heat exposure does actually affect the brain. Mm -hmm. And we found results in these small studies. It does alert to me that it is, is doing something. I'm always doing it, you know? And I'm always putting my mom in there. I'm like, mom, you're 80 years old. You gotta go in the sauna, you know? You gotta, you, not the ice bath, it's too cold for but the sauna, you gotta get in the sauna. The, the value and the benefit of sports and physical activity, there's a tremendous value to that, as long as it's done safely. And, that, and as we're learning about these long-term effects, we can give parents advice, we can give athletes advice, you know, how long should they play? What, when should they stop? Hopefully from, from projects like this, we'll be able to make these activities safer. It's part of our culture. Whether it's soccer, football, UFC, we just want to understand the brain, 
what level does it get bad where we have to stop and have more data to understand that. It's happening, but let's protect the brain while we're doing it.